So we're going to be starting Unit 2, Earth System Structures and Processes. Layers of the Earth. So we want to actually pull back the layers of the Earth like it was an onion. So we want to pull back certain parts. So the Earth is made up of three main layers. We have the crust. We have the mantle. And we have the core. Now, if you notice, the crust is less than 1% of the Earth's mass. So it's only 5 to 100 kilometers thick. The mantle, however, is 67% of the Earth's mass, 2,900 kilometers thick. And the core is 33% of the Earth's mass. And basically, it's 68 or 6,900 kilometers in diameter. So how about we think of the layers of the Earth like a cake? So we have the icing is the crust. The mantle is the red velvet cake. We put a little thing of icing in between, right? The outer core, it can be the yellow cake. And then the icing and the white cake that's at the bottom, we can call that the inner core. Now, I want you to see these pictures, and I want you to draw these pictures as you take notes to identify the different layers of the earth. So who even talks about the earth? Well, those are geologists. Um, and so what are the two ways in which geologists can actually define the layers of the earth? Well, physical and compositional. Basically, what it looks like and what it's made of, okay? So how do we even know how these layers even exist? Well, it's the seismic waves. So this is how geologists figured out that the composition of the Earth. So as you see here, we have a starting point. So this is came from an earthquake and the seismic waves, so P waves, you notice was wet, uh, red. The S waves, we're going to talk about those later on in this unit, um, are blue, but you see the surface waves um, on the top. And those, again, so we have P waves, S waves, and surface waves. And we know these are seismic waves. We will talk about these more when we talk about earthquakes. So let's start off with the crust. Again, draw these pictures as you take notes. As you see, we have an ocean. And as we see, we have land. So what makes up our crust? Ocean and land. Oceanic crust, continental crust. So the crust again, we have oceanic and we have continental. The thinnest layer of the earth that ranges from only two miles in some areas on the ocean floor uh, to 75 miles deep under the mountains. If your mind, you think that's a long way, but think about traveling maybe to Myrtle Beach, it's about 75 miles. That's about how thick our crust is from the mountains. And then under the ocean, only about two miles. That's like you probably going from your house to Sand Hope. Made up of large amounts of silicone and aluminum. You have to know that, okay? So silicone and aluminum. And I already talked to you, but it's two types of crust, oceanic and continental. These are composed of plates, right? And this is the plates that the continents and the oceans rest on. So remember when we all thought everything was one big Pangea? Well, this is how the ocean um, crust and the continental crust begin to spread apart and make different continents. So let's look at an apple compared to an earth. So the crust, you see how thin the skin is on an apple? That's about how thin it, the crust is on the earth. So 
So now let's talk about our next level. Let's talk about the mantle. So again, make sure you take this and kind of draw this inside of your notebook. We have the lower mantle. We have a middle mantle. And of course, if you notice here, in the mental mantle, we have the convection currents that takes place here. Then we have the upper mantle. Again, this is right up under the crust. So again, the mantle, we have upper, we have the convection currents that happens in the middle, and we have the lower mantle. This is solid, but capable to flow like hot asphalt or fudge. So you ever have like a, a molted fudge brownie um, and at the very top it has a thin layer of the crispy crust and on the inside it's like a gooey chocolate. Well, this is what this is. It's the thickest layer on earth. So basically almost 70%. Remember I told you it's about 66, give or take. So our average is about 70% of the earth is this right here, just the gooey part of the, the hot, brownie. So the hot material, which is magma, um, and the mantle rises to the top of the mantle, okay, cools and sinks, reheats and rises again. So again, if you put the brownie inside the oven and stuff, you see the bubbles after a while, they go down, they come back up. So it's the heat. So after it reheats, it rises again. These are the convection currents that cause those changes. And where are the convection currents located? In the mental mantle. So what happens is once it gets cools, see how it goes back up because it's boiling. Once it cools down, it goes down. And it gets a whole cycle. So now we're going to our next, which is the core. We have the outer core and we also have the inner core. So the outer core it's molten liquid located about 1800 miles beneath the crust and about 1400 miles thick again composed of melted metals such as nickel and iron okay so nickel and iron The inner core the inner core solid mostly made up of iron so again solid mostly made up of iron yes is hot 12,000 degrees Fahrenheit. We can barely take 105 degrees Fahrenheit over here over the summer days. So imagine 12,000 degrees Fahrenheit. We won't make it. Heat in the core is basically generated by the radioactivity of uranium and other elements. And what was uranium used in our last thing we talked about? Atomic bombs, right? So uranium has a lot to do with our earth and the bombs, the nuclear. So uranium is very important. And the reason why this is solid is because the pressure from the outer core mantle and crust making it comprise. So imagine you have these layers and this keep all the pressure, everything that's on top. So this is what makes this a solid because it has to have something solid. So if you think about a peach, right? The peach has skin, but on the inside of the peach, there is a big old sea just like this. That is the best representation we can actually bring of the earth. Now, how far is it to the Earth's center? Because some people are like, how? I want to know how far it is from right here to get into the middle of the Earth. Well, you're talking about almost 4,000 miles. 4,000 miles. So like I told you, look at the peach. You can see the crust, the real thin layer, okay? This layer was the mantle, but of course we have three layers of the mantle. But look at the core, solid. Same thing with an egg. You have the shell, then you would have the mantle, then you would have the core. So the outer core 
versus the inner core. So outer core, liquid, inner core, solid. The mantle, and again, it's composed of three layers, right? We have the lower, middle, and upper. So the asthenosphere consists of hot rock tar, which moves slowly, right? And then we have the crust at the very top. What's on the edge of your bread? Crust. We live, obviously, in the lithosphere. That's what our unit is about, which is the crust and the upper layer of the mantle. So the asthenosphere. So here, it is a soft layer of the mantle where the pieces of the lithosphere moves. It's made up of solid, which is almost like putty, but again, this is, again, the hot lava molten uh, brownie um, when you open it up and it's just kind of smooth, but it's still almost a solid, but it's definitely like soft. That is there. So again, the lithosphere, crust and upper mantle. And it divided into separate plates, which move very, very slow in response to convecting a part of the mantle. So as you see here, we have the convection currents, right? So it helps the plates move. And then we have some that makes continents move together, and some of them will make the continents move apart. So remember how we said we're supposed to start off as Pangaea? Well, that's in one of our next lessons. This right here will show you why and how. So what does these two images tell us about the layers of the Earth? Let's look. The deeper we go, the hotter it is. So temperature increases as depth increases. So the lower we go, the hotter it is. So look at the information here on this graph. I want you to take time, maybe if you have to pause it to see it. What is the relationship between depth and density pressure? So depth and pressure. So here's the depth, here's the pressure. So let's look here. Yep, you got it. The deeper we go, the more pressure it is, right? The more weight we put on you, the more pressure it is for you. So density and pressure increases as the depth increases. So again, if you put um, a brick and you put stuff on top of the brick, eventually the brick can get weak because of how much weight you put on, put on top of it. So the pressure, definitely the density, and pressure increases as the depth increases. So temperature, density, and pressure increases as depth increases. Key point now, make sure you add this to your drawings and your notes. So which layer of the earth has the greatest temperature, pressure, and density? The core, it's in the center. So it's in the middle, so all the temperature, it gets the hottest. It gets all the pressure because it's right there. And the density is all there. So let's summarize this. The earth is layered with the lithosphere. That's what we live on. Okay, and we live on the crust. Um, and then we have the convecting mantle and a dense metallic core. Pressure, temperature, and density increases as depth increases.